Is that what you got there, Rev? I have new resin to try out. That's right. We're trying out something new. So this is by Tansorex. T-A-N-S-O-R-E-X. Tansorex. And what got my attention when I saw this is this. New anti-bubbles formula. We're going to test that theory. So, what comes in it? You have A. You have B. 64 fluid ounces each. You have instructions. Product description. We'll get to that. You have two scrapey doodles. Which, fun fact, you can also use in the kitchen. I've done that. Just don't use it with resin. You have many pairs of fancy black gloves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ounce cups. You have five little table cover placemat things. Four snot suckers. Or pipettes, if you will. Ooh, look, I found a spare. <gasps> Ooh, so there's more. And a bunch, ten, of wooden sticks that you can use for stirring if you choose. You also have two of these 300 mil hard plastic mixing cups. That, my friends, that ain't bad. And on Amazon, I found this, and there will be a link in the description for this, uh, if I like it. Uh, on Amazon, the this is I got the one gallon kit, okay, which is described as epoxy resin one gallon kit, crystal clear art resin hardener, no yellowing, no bubbles, fast cure, uh, self leveling, easy to mix, one to one, river tabletop DIY mold casting arts craft jewelry making, etc. etc. Um, for the one gallon, this whole kit, this whole thing was forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents U S. On Amazon. That ain't bad. They also have a uh, 32 ounce kit. They have the 64 ounce kit and they have the 64 ounce kit that comes with ooh, that comes with mica powders and ink. So check them out. Uh, we'll see how this goes in this whole thing. So, just wanted to show you what all comes with it. So, let's read some instructions, shall we? Yes. Yes, we shall. So, I'm going to scoot you guys in so you can see a little bit better and you don't have to look at the amazing mess on my desk. So, product description is a one-to-one -one mix. You can pause this. If you want to read it in more detail, um, strives to achieve better achieve ha huh? achieve better defoaming effect. Uh, ultra glossy, crystal clear, yellow resist, and self leveling. Do not pour more than one and a half inches or three point eight one centimeters per layer. Um, okay, next ingredient list. There's your ingredient list. Tells you exactly what's in it and what the percentages are. Operating procedure, pre-processing step, clean, dry, containers, molds, mixing equipment. Um, mix evenly, one to one, three minutes, either by weight or volume. Nice. A uh, 40 minute work time, eight hour surface drying, 24 hour cure, uh, 72 hour full harden. Bubble solving. Oh, okay, so it gives you different options. Self defoaming. Certain degree of self defoaming ability. After mixing, let 
left to wait for its natural defoaming. Heating, you can use hair dryer, lighter, or heat gun. Uh, avoid heating the surface temperature too high, resulting in flash gear. Vacuum pump. Okay, vacuum pump is the best way to defoam in the shortest amount of time to completely eliminate bubbles. Uh, formulations have a better defoaming effect than other brands under the same operating conditions, but you still need to avoid violent mixing. Uh, once the large bubbles cut into small bubbles, it will be hard to self-defoam, except for vacuum treatment, if available. They mean um, bubble remover machines, not your actual vacuum cleaner. Uh, storage temperature, pretty normal. Uh, summer, I love this. Uh, summer, high temperature in summer will result in faster reaction rates and possibly shorter operating times. Winter. Resin will stop reacting and will not cure when the product is below 5C or 41 Fahrenheit. Uh, please store in higher environment temperature or preheat with warm water. Uh, I am skin irritant. Keep away from children. Duh. Uh, duration 24 months shelf life. Quality. Compliance standards are there. Awesome. Waste management service. There's their email address. And yeah, so there's their little leaflet. Now, one thing that I did find uh, intriguing also about this is you guys know that I only use uh, FoodSafe. Um, and on their Amazon page and on their website, it says that it is food safe after full cure, which means 72 hours. Uh, low odor, we'll see about that. Um, high temperature resistance. Uh, temperature resistance is up to, uh, I saw it on here. One moment, please. No, I don't want that. Sorry. Ill prepared. Uh, non toxic, non flammable, low odor, no VOCs. Uh, 85D hardness, which is nice. Um, it is 185 Fahrenheit, uh, safe, heat safe, 185. So if I do some maths, that tells me that it's about 100 degrees Celsius. So you can put a screaming hot cup of coffee. Uh, on this stuff, and it shouldn't shouldn't bother it. Actually, I figured I might as well show you guys the uh, process. Sorry about the mess. We're remodeling for your convenience. Not really. I just have a mess. Uh, I'm getting these open because I want you to see it. So, childhood cap, and then we have our foil. There we go. All right, so there's A, or excuse me, B. We're gonna do two ounces. Actually, one and a half. Okay. So there's one and a half of B degrees in my craft room slash office slash living room slash whatever which equates to 25.2 degrees Celsius. So it has been sitting at room temperature all day long, so it is nice and, uh, you know, warm. It's not cold or anything, which is good. So there's a, voila. Okay. And then we will do ounce and a half of A. Now, this does not have little plumpy doodles on it, but I'm fine with that. I The pumps on resin bottles, convenient as they are, also tend to be a bit annoying because they drip and you get stuff all over the place unless you clean them off each and every single time and it can get a little bit annoying. Um, so now that we've got our three ounces poured, 
where you mix it. And I am going to, you know, do just what I normally do. Silicone stick. And just mix it up non-violently, <laughs> as instructionally mentioned. But I am going to mix, you know, like I normally mix my resin. I'm not doing anything special. This is just a regular, everyday, you know, test, if you will, of new resin, which I'm excited about. And no, this is not sponsored. Again, I bought this. Um, I saw it. I thought, hey, this looks good. Um, I enjoy the prospect of low bubbles without having to, you know, drag out the debubbler every time. Or bubble remover, however you want to put it. Um, so if I can, you know, find a resin that works good for me, that might work well for you guys at a decent price point. I'm going to give it a shot, right? So that's what we're doing. I'm scraping my sides, scraping the bottom. As per the use, just want to make sure that everything is nice and mixed. And I can say that it is very low odor, you know, um, it, it, it doesn't smell like, because you know, some resins you find out there smell, pardon me, but like cat pee, and uh, this doesn't have much of an odor at all, I mean, it smells a little you know, a, a tiny bit uh, chemically, but nothing worse than, you know, a bottle of Windex uh, or stronger than that. I mean, it doesn't smell like ammonia, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you an equatable level of smell, you know. Um, just really kind of smells like plastic, uh, which is what it is. Uh, so I have been mixing this. for about three minutes, which is the manufacturer recommended stir time, and I do not see any streaky bits, and that is our bubble level. And you guys watch me stir the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I am not going to run this through any machinery or anything. I do not have my heat mat on. Nothing. I'm just going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. It is currently 7.34 p.m. Uh, so I'm going to let this sit for about 15 minutes, see how it looks after that time, and I will see you then. All right, so here's our projects. So here's our resin. Minimal little micro bubbles. Not terribly worried about those. So I wanted to do something simple and then something a little bit more detailed so we could kind of see you know the difference between the two. So I've got my into resin turtle and or crystal turtle, however you wish to describe him. And I'm gonna fill him up. And he takes about a half an ounce. So I'm going to do a little bit at a time, as you do, with these crystal molds. Just going through with a very soft silicone tool, just to try to encourage any of those little bubbles that might happen to get stuck in the crystals out. And it is a handmade mold, of course. You've seen me use it before. You've seen a lot of people use it before. It's a very, very popular mold, and I think it's very, very popular because it's so pretty. He's just cute. And I 
do have a 20% off discount for into resin. The link is in the description box. You can use it on your entire order in into resin, not just this turtle. sure that I've got them all filled up and I can get out as many of those little bubbles as I can. And it's sort of monotonous watching somebody pour clear resin, but I figured that uh, in this case it would be the most accurate representation of the resin itself is to do clear so you can see how clear it is. I mean, because they say anti-bubbling formula. Well, like I said, I want to test the theory. Clean up the tool here. I do see some of those little micro bubbles coming up in the turtle, so it's good. And then this is just my obviously scalloped edge mold. And uh, I have put a temporary tattoo in the middle of it because I figured if I'm going to make a clear mold, might as well make it pretty. Um, I am going to go around the edges slightly. Uh, with some 99% alcohol just to try to get uh, any of the bubbles that might happen to live in the uh, or want to stick around in the corners of the or the right angles of the mold a little bit better. Don't normally do that on my handmade molds, but on my regular silicone molds, I don't mind. Uh, just because the, the uh, silicone tends to be a little bit, you know, heftier, uh, thicker, more industrialized than uh, the handmade silicone that places use. It's like I use uh, T-Expert 10A for my handmade molds, and it's very soft and it's very pliable, very squishy. Um, I've got some resin over here from my stir stick. I'm going to clean that up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to let this do its thing. We're going to, you know, let it cure. I do need to go around with my tool around the edges just to make sure. Thank you for reminding me. So I know there was somebody, somebody out there yelling at the screen, going, "Get the edges rough." Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's early in the morning. Somebody in the house decided to cook at two o'clock in the morning and set off the uh, smoke alarm that is directly above my. My door. So, yeah, that was fun. It was a good time. Okay, now that we've done that, again, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to take Tiny Torch, go over gently. spray with a little more alcohol just to get those surface bubbles. Yeah, so now we wait. We'll see how it turns out. See you soon. All right, so here it is. Now, unfortunately, the mold itself was had some flaws on it. Uh, so that's coming through, but I'm not testing the mold, I'm testing the resin. Um, <laughs> look at that clarity. I mean, look at that. It's insane. Absolutely insane. It is crystal clear, seriously. So, I am very impressed. Very impressed indeed. 
uh, with the Tensor X. So yeah, this is going in my uh, in my description box. So there will be a link, and it will take you to Amazon. And you know, if you're so inclined, go for it. And just as a you know, here's the turtle. And here's the skull turtle. So yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Take care, guys. Cheers.